Central calls me, tells me I'm picking up a little boy with special needs and taking him to school five days a week until whenever. I'm excited though. I love working with kids. I go to bed early. I gotta get this kid at 7 a.m. So I wanna be sharp. The next morning I roll up to a ghetto-tastic house. Six boys, one mom. All the boys are special needs. Mom brings out this little guy. Let's call him Franklin. Franklin is five years old, but he's the size of a two-year-old. He might weigh 45 pounds, soaked and wringing wet. I watch her strap him into his car seat. He's silent the whole time. He travels about a half an hour with me to his school in Bangor, and so we're together half an hour twice a day. We roll up to this office building. It's been converted into a school. He was silent the whole ride. I watched him in the mirror, and all he did was wiggle his feet and watch the trees go by out the window. He takes my hand as he gets out of the car. We go inside of the building, and his school is on the fifth floor. He holds my hand through the elevator ride. We get off the elevator in a very blank, white lobby slash waiting room. There's the elevator, stairs, and just one door. The door needs a key code, and, well, I don't have it. Franklin wiggles my hand with his, and then points up to the camera that I'd missed. It's watching the door. I knock on the door, and just a few seconds, a woman opens it. Blonde hair, blue eyes, red shirt, black pants. No shoes? No shoes. Franklin starts through the door into a hallway with another door at the end that's open, and kitty noises are coming out of it. You know, the sound of little kids playing. Teacher puts her hand on my chest, stopping me from following him. I nod and kneel down to Franklin. Hey Franklin, I gotta go. Your teacher can hold your hand, though. He looks at his teacher, then lets go of my hand and walks down the hallway without taking hers. I shrug and stand up. She takes his backpack from me and forces me out the doorway before shutting the door in my face. I glance up at the camera and then leave. Around 3 p.m., I arrive at the door. Two other guys, dads, I presume, are in the room as well. Both are silent, standing near the door. The door unlocks. One little girl steps out. She smiles to one of the men and he picks her up. They leave. The door opens, and the little boy steps out. He seems sad, though. The other man steps over and rubs his shoulders before they walk into the elevator and leave, just like the others before. I step up to the door, and the door opens. But instead of a kid, there's Franklin's teacher standing there in the doorway, and she hands me his backpack. But where's Franklin? I ask. He steps around from behind her and holds out his hand for me to take it. I take his hand and smile to his teacher. As we leave, she shuts the door immediately behind Franklin. But he starts toward the elevator before I can think it through, and I follow along. He's silent on the ride home. When we get home, his mom comes to my car to get him. I tell her about him being quiet, and she says, Oh, Franklin's just shy. Give him a few days. As she's getting him out of the car, he wraps his arms around her neck. Is daddy home? He asks. She smiles and strokes his head. Not tonight, she replies. Okay, he says laying his head on her shoulder and waving to me. I wave back and they go inside. After a few days of this routine, Franklin starts talking. He asks me, what are those, as he's pointing to the clouds? I look up and point to the clouds. Those are clouds. Sometimes it rains when they come around. Other times it snows. Sometimes nothing happens and they just float on by. He nods. I like clouds. I smile to him and we continue on. In the elevator, holding my hand, he looks up to me and asks, how high the building goes. I say, eh, probably into the clouds. That's a pretty tall building. I point up. You're really tall. 
Can you reach the clouds? He asks me. Nah, I'm not tall enough to reach the clouds. Not yet, anyway. I tease in reply. Someday, I'll be big like you, and I'll touch the clouds whenever I want. He says, smiling. I have no doubt, pal. I tell him, messing his hair up a little bit. The same routine. I'm not allowed in. The teacher in red and black, no shoes, answers the door. As Franklin gets out of the car at home, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, he asks his mom again if his dad is home. She shakes her head, and then he reluctantly accepts it. The next day, she has him loaded up, and I ask where Franklin's dad is. He's around, she said in a dismissive tone before heading back inside. The same routine, not allowed in, barefoot, red shirt, black pants. I stop her this time. He asks about his dad every night, I tell him. She crosses her arms under her chest and watches Franklin walk down the hall. All the children here ask about their parents, she replied flatly before asking me to step out of the doorway. I stay there for a minute, watching him as the door at the other end closes. I hear one of the security cameras crane around to point at me. You may leave now, a woman's voice, different from Franklin's teacher, says over the loudspeaker. I shrug and head toward the elevator, and the camera returns to whatever it was pointing at before. On the walk out, I notice that just beyond the glass walls between paper-thin curtains, I can see that there's a cubicle hell just outside this first floor. They're all running numbers. Most of their phones look like they're from the 90s. None of them look up at me. I find a lady at the end getting up to go to the bathroom. I meet her by the door. Hey, any idea where a good cup of coffee is around here? I ask. She stops dead in her tracks and looks at me. I have a boyfriend. She sneers and continues on her way. I snicker and rub my cheek for a moment. Is it listed on Google? I don't want to get lost trying to find that place. I shout after her as she steps down a darkened hallway toward an illuminated bathroom door. I shrug and leave. This goes on for weeks. Not the coffee lady, but the thing with Franklin's teacher. And I finally stop his teacher from pushing me out of the doorway. Wait, wait, why are there only guys picking up and dropping off children here? She pretends to be blindsided and then insists that I step out of the doorway. Children come here for a variety of reasons. Dads are usually the ones who have the time to pick them up. I know you're not Franklin's dad, so stop with the questions. The door unlocks before she turns to it, and she enters peacefully. Please leave, the voice over the intercom instructs. All right, I'm going, I say putting my hands up. That afternoon, I pull into Franklin's driveway, and there are a ton of cars at his house, all the boys are outside playing with squirt guns. They're chasing one guy, maybe in his 40s. They're running up and down the front yard. He's very well dressed. Red shirt, black pants, white tie. He's wearing shoes, though. Sneakers at that. Franklin spots this guy and sits up in his seat, trying to take his seatbelt off before the car comes to a stop. Daddy's home, he shouts as his mother opens the car door. He jumps out of the car and rushes over to this guy. Daddy, daddy, he shouts as this man picks him up. I get out of the car, and the man in red, carrying Franklin, comes over. He holds Franklin against his chest and offers his hand to me. Hi, I'm Dad, he says with a bit of a laugh behind his words. I'm David. I take his hand and shake it. Great to finally meet you, Dave. I've heard a lot about you. He says, bouncing Franklin a bit. Franklin giggles and hugs his dad's neck. Good things, I hope, I stated, shoving my hands into my pockets. Great things. Franklin behaves better at school. He even eats lunch there now. Thank you for getting him under control. I don't know what you're doing, but please keep doing it. He turns away from me and heads back into the squirt gun fight, Franklin still in his arms. I don't see dad again for a few days. I bring Franklin to school. The door unlocks, and there's Dad. He smiles to me. Franklin looks up at him and, and walks into the hallway, not saying a word. I frown and look up at Dad. Franklin lets go of my hand once he's through the doorway. 
Don't worry, Dad says, patting me on the shoulder. I back through the doorway, and he watches me as he closes the door, blocking my view of Franklin. I think about that for the rest of the day, and then when I finally get back to Franklin on our ride home, I ask him about his day. He tells me about ABCs, dancing, and playing with dinosaurs. Normal kid stuff. I ask him about Dad. Daddy's not at school, silly, he says to me. I stare for a long while, in disbelief mostly. I snap back to reality when his mom opens the door. Did you have a good day? She asks Franklin. He repeats the same thing to me. Exactly. Word for word, tone for tone. I sit on the hood of the car for a minute as she signs the paperwork that authorizes this transportation. It's all red tape for the bureaucrats. So Franklin's dad, he works at the school too? She says, nope, he's around. She walks inside with Franklin. I shake my head in disbelief before getting back into the car and going home. I need a drink. That night I get a call from Central, telling me I need to wait after I drop off Franklin at school tomorrow. The next day comes. I drop off Franklin. And I wait. And I wait. And I wait. Waiting! Finally, after a half an hour, an elderly woman. We'll call her Marge. Steps through from the stairs and hands me a clipboard with a piece of paper that says, I, David Blankerson, hereby declare I will not mention things I have seen or experienced while transporting Franklin Blankenson. Marge clears her throat and taps the board, telling me that I need to hurry. I sign and shove it back into her chest. Hell of a school day. I state before heading back to the elevator. It opens before I push the button or before I get to it. I turn back and Marge has already gone back to the door she came from. It's clicking shut behind her. What the hell is this place? Now this past week, Franklin has been having headaches. He leaves school rubbing his forehead. He tells me it's because of a new song. I ask him to tell me about it. He says he can't because it makes his head hurt. Franklin goes to school with two pairs of pants and only wears long sleeves now. He goes to school a bit dirty. He comes home literally smelling like roses. He still seems normal. We talk about dragons and he asks me if firefighters fight dragons. It's kind of cute. I haven't seen Dad or Marge and the teacher still ignores me. But wait, but wait, 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 wait